Hello again. This is Math 2231 coming to you from the College of DuPage. The title of this lecture is LSA, the Bisection Algorithm, and this is the solution to that. As always, please be attentive listeners while watching this video. By way of introduction, Recall that the intermediate value theorem for continuous functions can be used to help you locate approximate roots. Uh, the assertion of the intermediate value theorem is that if you have a continuous function f on an interval, closed interval a, b, and if f is uh, negative at one end point and positive on the other end point, then there has to be a third point, c, between a and b, such that f of c is equal to zero. And in class, I showed you, my students, a bisection algorithm which allows you to find the approximate root to any specified degree of accuracy. Now this LSA goes a little bit further into critical thinking, but that's what a good LSA should do. So here is the LSA statement. There are three parts. Part one says, suppose you have a continuous function f of x on the closed interval 0, 1, and f of 0 is bigger than 0, and f of 1 is less than 0, how many iterations of the bisection method are required to find an approximate root accurate to three decimal places? Part 2 asks you to explain how to find an approximate solution to the equation cosine x equal x accurate to three decimal places using insights from part 1. And yes, there is something to do here, and we'll talk about that later. Finally, last but not least, is part three. I ask you to use Excel to implement uh, the process and turn in your complete Excel worksheet uh, showing the formulas uh, and the step-by-step -step results, uh, including uh, the final answer. Uh, so, and again, this is what I model for you in our classroom example. So let's begin with part one. So if you have a continuous function on 0, 1, with f of 0 being bigger than 0 and f of 1 being less than 0, uh, how many iterations do you, you need to do to find approximate root accurate to three decimal places? As we proceed with the bisection algorithm, the error term is reduced by a factor of 2 with each iteration. So in part one, we know the root is between zero and one. So guessing the midpoint, as we do in this algorithm, means that our maximum error has to be less than one half. You could think about this as being how wrong could you be? Said another way, for n equal one, the error of the estimate or the guess is less than or equal to one over two to the first power. Now in a similar way, our error in the next iteration is less than or equal to uh, uh, 1 over uh, 2 squared, and so on. Thus, our error in the its nth iteration is less than or equal to 2 raised to the n power. Now, part 1 asks us how many iterations are required to have an error of less than 0 0.001, and so that means we have to have 1 over 2 to the n less or equal to 1 over uh, 1,000, and you can solve this for n, and you see that n has to be bigger than or equal to 10, uh, because 2 to the 10th is uh, equal to 1024. So the answer is you need 10 iterations. Now part two asks us to explain uh, how to find an approximate solution to the equation cosine x equal x, accurate to three decimal places using insights from part one. And yes, there was something to do here. Let's talk about that. Note that part one does not apply directly to solving this, cosine x equal um, x, because we're not finding the root of an equation. We're not solving an equation for f of x equal to zero. But it will apply directly if we consider the equivalent problem, that is finding an approximate root of y equals f of x equal and you see we changed this, we're looking at cosine x minus x, and we're looking for a solution in 0, 1, which is where the solution will, uh, will lie. So this was the uh, essence of the problem. You had to change it into something we can do. Now this does apply because f of 0 in this case is equal to 1 is bigger than 0, and f of 1 is uh, less than 0, 
and f, this function, is certainly a continuous function on AB, so it does apply. So this is exactly part one. Um, and you should note that solving this problem is not a problem that is readily solved by other analytical techniques, and so a good engineer would probably be thinking about solving this using approximations like we're doing in this uh, uh, part. Okay, finally, uh, last but certainly not least, part three, I ask you to use this Excel to implement the processes that we've uh, talked about in parts one and two, and turn in your complete Excel worksheet showing the formulas, and also the step-by-step -step results, including the final answer. And again, this is what I modeled for you in the classroom uh, example that we went through. Okay, so here are the iterations, and we have left in points, left hand point and right hand point. Our guess is always the midterm. We have to evaluate the function, which was cosine x minus x, at both the left end point, the right end point, and the midpoint. And we say, what's the maximum error associated with uh, the guest? But then, uh, what we're able to do is, depending on how the SIGNs work out, we are able to uh, determine what is the next left-hand endpoint and right endpoint. So that's what uh, I did here. And we went through uh, the steps, and you can see that there were 10 iterations that were required. And you can see that my maximum error did, in those 10 iterations, uh, fall below uh, 0 0.001. And so uh, that is good. And we also know that our guess at that time, that the solution uh, to the problem is uh, accurate at least to three uh, decimal places, is 0 0.739. So those are that part of the answer. Now, I did ask you to turn in your formulas as well, and so if you're following directions, you should have done this, and I just showed you a, a formula perspective. And so these were the formulas that I used. It, re it required a little bit of critical thinking as you were going through, and you didn't have to be fancy in, in programming um, this. But anyway, these are the formulas that I was asking for. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself because self-care is important and of each other because we're all in this together. Strive to make a difference each and every day. Look forward to seeing you in class and God bless you all.